Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for this Christmas tide season. Let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Today, December 28th, we commemorate the Holy Innocents, martyrs. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 1. A new king, who knew nothing to Joseph, came to power in Egypt. He said to his subjects, Look how numerous and powerful the Israelite people are growing, more so than we ourselves. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them to stop their increase. Otherwise, in time of war, they too may join our enemies to fight against us, and so leave our country. Accordingly, taskmasters were sent over the Israelites to oppress them with forced labor. Thus, they had to build for Pharaoh the supply cities of Pithom and Rasmus. Yet, the more they were opposed, the more they multiplied and spread. The Egyptians then dreaded the Israelites and reduced them to cruel slavery, making life bitter for them with hard work and martyr and brick and all kinds of field work. The whole cruel fate of slaves. The king of Egypt told the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was called Shifra and the other Pua, When you act as midwives for the Hebrew women and see them giving birth, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she may live. Pharaoh then commanded all his subjects, Throw into the river every boy that is born to the Hebrews, but you may let all the girls live. And our second reading is from a sermon by Saint Gildeus. A tiny child is born. It was a great king. Wise men are led to f him from afar. They come to adore one who lives in a manger, and yet reigns in heaven and on earth. When they tell of one who is born a king, Herod is disturbed. To save his kingdom, he resolves to kill him, though if he would have faith in the child, he himself would reign in peace, in this life and forever in the life to come. Why are you afraid, Herod, when you hear of the birth of a king? He does not come to drive you out, but to conquer the devil. But because you do not understand this, you are disturbed and enraged. And to destroy one child whom you seek, you show your cruelty in the death of so many children. You are not restrained by the love of weeping mothers or fathers mourning the deaths of their sons, nor by the cries and sobs of the children. You destroy those who are tiny in body because you fear is destroying your heart. You imagine that if you accomplish your desire, you can prolong your own life, though you are seeking to kill life himself. Yet your throne is threatened by the source of grace, so small yet so great, who is lying in manger. He is using you, all aware of it, to work out his own purposes, freeing souls from captivity to the devil. He's taken up the children, the sons of the enemy, into the ranks of God's adopted children. The children die for Christ, though they do not know it. The parents mourn for the death of martyrs. The child makes so those, makes of those as yet unable to speak fit witness to himself, sees a kind of kingdom that is his, coming as he did in order to be the, this kind of king. See how the deliverer is already working deliverance, the savior already working salvation. But you, Herod, do not know this, and you are disturbed and furious. While you vent your fury against the child, you are already paying him homage, and do not know it. How great a gift of grace is here. To what merits of their own do the children owe this kind of victory? They cannot speak, yet they bear witness to Christ. They cannot use their limbs to engage in battle, yet already they bear off the palm of victory. Let us pray. Father, the holy innocents offered you praise by the death they suffered for Christ. May our lives bear witness to the faith we profess with our lips. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, a mighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the name with your mighty power, and grant that this day we will fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The mighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen.